Here's some of our concepts. One, it's blitz tempo. We got you got to teach kids the tempo of blitzing. And the you know, and this is something I learned, you know, coming back from college to high school, right? High school defensive kids inherently play slow, right? They get in big old wide stances and they stand around. And it's not that they don't want to play hard. It's just they don't know how, right? And so we are coaching from the jump. When we leave that locker room, man, it's about blitz tempo. It's feet under your hips, long stride, and everything you do, right? I want every guy on our team thinking he's a track athlete, right? And – you know, and, and so the things about movement and, and one of our deals, I'm going to show you some of the things we do in off season defensive movement days is, you know, we want all of those movements to be fast and forward. Right. And we also want them to be able to keep their head still as they move so that the game isn't jumping around and moving and looking faster than it is. And we want to play downhill. Right. And so we want we we spend a lot of time starting with stance and start. We want narrow stances. We want, you know, guys coming straight ahead and we, we've got to teach that blitz tempo. And that's where we get into aiming points versus gaps and things like that. Uh, and I'll, I'll hit some of that a little bit. Pressure is not a best guess or an act of desperation. It's not like, oh, they got three first downs in a row, heat them up. No, 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 no. They went out on the field with the offense, heat them up. They got a first down, heat them up again. We hit them for minus 12, heat them up again. Right. It is not an act of desperation. And it's not like, hey, man, I think like this is second and six and they've got uh, 11 personnel in the game. They've been running a lot of boot right here. I think I'm going to think I'm going to run something that will help us defend the boot. No, that's not it either. I'm not guessing at it. Right. We have a system that's based on some some sound fundamentals of offensive football. And we're only putting five guys in it anyway. It's not like we're selling out seven-man pressures all the time. And so it's not an act of desperation. And it's not a guess, right? Formations matter, right? And we blitz formations, right? If there's a fullback in the formation, which is a guy in front of the a quarterback or in front of another running back, that matters. People put a fullback in the backfield, as we all know, for a reason. And – you know, do we do we go put put our entire defense in a position to be successful because of what they're doing offensively? All right. If a back is flat, if the quarterback's in gun and the back is flat, okay, that matters. Which side he's on, the width that he's at, things like that, those matter, right? And so that's what we we build our stuff around. Okay. Schemes matter, right? When I break down film, and I will cover this in one of those last sessions, last videos, is I'm going to break down primary run scheme, right? So I'm going to break down the, the run scheme on each play. Was that a gap scheme run? So, I'm, yeah, we're going, to, we're going to put in the play. I was inside zone, whatever, whatever, right? But then we're going to say, okay, what was, the, what was the run scheme? Was it gap? Was it zone? Was it man? Okay? And – then I'm going to run a report at the end. Okay, these guys are 80% gap scheme, 15% zone scheme, and had a little bit of you know some tricks or whatever in the other stuff, right? And so that that I can set my pressure rules for that week based on what your primary run schemes are. All right. It also helps me with how much time it's taking the ball to get back into the line of scrimmage. Okay, those things matter as well. Okay, so. Uh, something we did a few years ago that's helped us a lot in teaching our D linemen, right? We went in and I did a study during the, during the winter, uh, just looking at our D linemen. And what I've figured out is that when I was coaching in college, I told my D line guy what I needed those guys to end where they needed to end up. And he taught them what they were doing and how to do it. I couldn't tell you exactly what he was coaching and how he was coaching it in terms of execution. Right. What I saw after my first couple of years of coaching high school, the D line guy didn't really know what I wanted in terms of how to do it. He knew where they were supposed to go and he's trying to figure it out. And so what I did was I, I just had to sit down and go through every one of our pressures and every one of our D line movements and every one of our linebacker blitzes. And I, specifically de de described and explained what I want that movement to look like. 
and then I named them after superheroes, right? So we have a Spider-Man technique on a Spider-Man. I line up on my guy in the front, wherever my alignment is based on my position in the call. But I line up on my guy. I cross his face. My aiming point is the hip of the next man inside. And that's where my eyes are. My eyes are on my target, right? So my, it's my aiming point. So I go to his hip. Once I get to that hip, I get vertical, okay? Not just I'm slanting into this gap. We never talk to our guys about gap responsibilities. We don't tell linebackers, you got A to C. We don't tell them, hey, you got the C gap. When you're some, we, we, no gaps, right? People start pulling, gaps move anyway. And I always, you know, you know, I, I, I struggle with how real it is to, to high school football players when gaps start moving and linemen start pulling. You know, we might understand it, but did your kids totally understand it? And so uh, whether they do or not, it's irrelevant to us because we're not talking about gaps. Right? Now, we may tell a backer, hey, you're going to blitz the A gap, torch this, just because it's his aiming point on that one. But we're not going to tell a slant lineman, you've got a gap. We're going to tell him he has a target, right? We tell our backers they have targets on their blitzes. Okay, so that's how, we, that's how we do all that. And all those are named after superheroes, and I'll hit them as we go through these blitzes. A linebacker that's not in a pressure is always going to track a running back. And we want our linebackers to know and understand they are expected to be inside the tackle players. They are not edge players. Even if they're removed in some of our structures, we want them playing back into the box and playing downhill. You know, that I do not want anybody to think that it's, it's easy to run the football on these guys because they're a 3-3 stack or they, you know, they're a, a, you know, sometimes they end up in a 3-2 box or a 3-1 box, whatever, based on formation. It's like, no, 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 no. We're blitzing you and we're putting that other guy back in the box anyway. So we want we want those backers, we want them to, to be run focused, and we want those guys to know they are in the box, in the line of scrimmage players. Okay. Um, coverage rules for our linebackers, very complicated. They're gonna kick straight back. So they get past, they're just gonna kick straight back. They're gonna drop their inside foot and work with depth or work for depth very slowly, ice pinned on the quarterback. We give them an alert to a three-man side. They'll push to the three-man side. That's it. That's the set. They do the same thing basically all the time. DBs, we are not a thirds team, quarters team, halves team, flat, hook, curl, seam, none of that. You are either a down defender or a deep defender because you have to keep in mind that we're playing three under two deep zone, two under three deep zone, four cross zone, two under two deep is our base coverages. We're assuming there's no backers to help us in the protection. Sometimes there might be, it might end up being four under two. It might end up being three under three. But the, you know, the, the ideas are that we've got to defend pass with five guys. So we're not, we, we never pattern match and, and things like that. And we'll get into that when we cover the coverage stuff. Okay. Systematic approach. It's every week, right? We're going to install camp rules in spring practice all through the summer, fall camp. All that. We're going to do the same things. Then when we get into a week, if there's a little tweak we have to make where we're going to call something just a little different, there's only one guy that has to know it because all the kids are doing things based on our call, right? It's kind of like if I give our quarterback on offense the option to, if I don't like the look, go to this play, he calls this play, then our kids just run that play. They don't have to know why the quarterback changed it, and they don't have to do a bunch of other things. They just know he went from this play to that place, and I'm going to run that play. Okay, rules don't change. We're going to stay with our rules, and then we're going to play zone coverage to eliminate the big plays. Like We want two guys back there all the time to keep anything from being devastating. It may aggravate us. It may pop a run, get 20 yards on us. We're going to tackle you and go back to work because the expectation is next play we're going to hit you in the backfield. And we want to play with one-word calls. In, in you know, and probably mo a lot of you are seeing this, but, you know, like in, in Oklahoma – if you're going to play late in the year, if you're going to be a semifinal team, a state championship team, and have a chance to defensively to play in those big games, then you have to be able to play at a at basically an almost illegal pace. And I'm not saying that in terms of fussing about offensive guys. I'm just saying that's how fast they go. Like 
they're waiting on the referee to spot the ball to snap it, right? And so if you've got a bunch of calls and a bunch of signals and a bunch of formation adjustments, then it's late in the year where the where everybody's even in terms of playing ability and all that kind of stuff, then we're giving offenses an advantage when we can't when we can't get our kids in a position to be able to use all their stuff. Okay.